Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is part two of my series on utilizing Blender for video editing. If you want to see how I got this screen that is in front of us right here, please refer to part one and it will bring you up to date. What we're going to talk about in this video specifically is importing source video files. So let's get started. First let's go over to the properties pane over here. We talked about this in the previous video. It's already pre-configured to my liking, but you need to make sure that before you actually add any video source files, that your frame rate is set correctly. Now, you need to look at the source files properties and see what the frame rate of those source files are and make this frame rate here match that. Now, I know that specifically the files that I'm utilizing are all 30 frames per second and they're all 720p. So I have this already pre-configured to my liking. But you, if you want to find out what the source files you're utilizing are set to, you, if you're using Linux, you can go to Properties, and they actually have an option that shows the actual settings of that file. Or you can use VLC on any platform, and VLC somewhere has a property setting that will actually show you what the, how it was encoded. And it will show you the information like the resolution and the frame rate. So refer to that information and set that before you actually add any source files to the timeline down here. Because if you add it and then you change the frame rate, it won't work. And if you add it and it's the wrong frame rate, uh, it will be offset, the audio and the video. So the, the, the lip syncing won't work. So that's the only thing you really need to know about the properties. Now let's actually import our first source file. We're going to go down here and before we actually uh, add a video file, we're going to set this green line to the place where we want the import to start at. So if I set it at frame 1000 and I went to add and I imported the file, it would actually start the file here. So we want to make sure that we started at frame one. So you can actually simply do that by going down here and typing one and hitting enter and that brings us to frame one or you can just lay it there with your mouse. But we have it at the right frame now. Now let's go to add and we'll add movie and I'm going to add MPEG-4 file and there we go. Now what you see up here is you see a preview of frame one uh, and if I scrub you'll see and you'll hear the audio. Now depending on what your uh, what your computer's capabilities are that may actually not look so nice. I happen to have a pretty high-end computer so I can actually uh, output the sample or the preview um, without any issues. But uh, you may actually have to use something called proxy video proxying in order to actually uh, improve the quality of that. We'll talk about that in a future video. Right now, let's just talk about the file, uh, that, the file that we actually imported and how it broke it up into channels. So these are channels, each of these little sections, these little gray and black and gray or black or whatever you want to call that, this gray and dark gray. Uh, it splits it up into an audio channel and a video channel. And they always use this color scheme, which is this greenish color and this purplish color. Uh, greenish color is audio and purplish color is video. And if you're confused by which one's which, you can look at the properties pane on the right and it will always show you what it is. So you always have to remember that when you're selecting in Blender, you don't select with your left button. You select with your right button. This is counterintuitive, but this is the way that Blender does it. So you select this audio channel and I can see over here it says sound and it has no dimension. That means it, it's not a video, it's not a picture. If I select this one with my right button, I can see it has a dimension of 1280 by 720. So guess what? That's actually a picture, or that's a video. So that's how you tell the difference between the two. So that is how you actually import, and that is uh, the, uh, the way that you actually see the properties for the source files that you import. We're going to talk about what to do with these files in the next videos coming. So I'm going to leave it at that.